We have discussed severally about deception which has been the vehicle and platform by which the adversary and those of the kingdom of darkness operate by. And as the days draw closer, their hype is intensified with more and more people falling prey. God who had known the end from the beginning had warned us to take heed, so as not to be deceived. Matthew 24, 2-4-15 KJV And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled. For all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines, and pestilences, and earthquakes in divers places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall kill you. shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake, and then shall many be offended, and shall betray one another, and shall hate one another, and many false prophets shall rise, and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. And then shall the end come. When he therefore shall see the abomination of desolation, spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place, whoso readeth, let him understand. Someone might ask, what's the big deal about deception? To start with, all forms of deception are rooted in evil schemes and agendas. No deception is of the truth, neither is any iota of truth in deception. That's why the Satanists' major weapon is deception, and they strive in it. Amen. Ah, like 
Deception derails, defocus, pervert, steal, destroy and kill, and ultimately leads its victims to damnation. That's the reason the Bible says, the devil has come to steal, kill and destroy. John 10.09 to 11 KJV, I am the door. By me if any man enter in, he shall be saved, and shall go in and out, and find pasture. The thief cometh not, but for to steal, and to kill, and to destroy. I am come that they might have life, and that they might have it more abundantly. I am the Good Shepherd. The Good Shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. The book of Matthew 24 has detailed extensively about events leading to the end. Also, specifically warning to beware of lies and deceit from unrepentant elements, heading nowhere but damnation, and of course, want the company of other souls. Literally made you to go and tie yourself to a tree, and they come there and say, oh, he cannot move, he's stuck. Then they begin to weep that it will So, but who be there sets you free? That's why the Bible talks that whoever the Son of God says, and demons, human agents, situations and circumstances of life. You are free to excel in life. You are free to do and undo things. You are free to move forward. Take heed you that you are not deceived. Around. Walk with the truth. The way and the life. Enjoy your day. A.O.D.
you must have opened the door for the fault line, fault lines to be to encroach into your space for the turning of roundabout to manifest in the fiscal. So don't give excuse of somebody else for what you should take responsibility for. Because when you are coming into this world, all those you are mentioning as excuses, they were they didn't come with you. Did they come with you? Of course not. And when you are exiting this world too, they won't go with you. You go by yourself. And when you get to the other side, and you have to explain and give accountability for all your ugly actions and deeds, they won't be there with you. It's going to be you. So this year, take absolute responsibility position for your life. Take charge of your life. Don't let some entity outside of you take charge of your life. Take charge. Be in control. Be responsible for your actions and inactions. And if there's a need for you to repent of what you are doing last year that made you to be turning on the same spot, spot and you, are, you see other people who are upwardly mobile they are always going upward and forward they are moving they are moving what is engineering them something similar to what I'm talking about they are taking responsibility for their lives ah is a witch in my village is the wizards in my village in my town in my city they are the cause of my problem you are deceiving yourself Take charge. Then the witches will disappear. The wizards will disappear. Even the demons and devils will disappear out of your life and space when you take charge. Remember the scripture that God said, I'm going to go through some scriptures. I have, a, I have to fill up, fulfill my time on time. The scripture said in Genesis chapter 1 verse chapter 1 verse 28 he said you must be fruitful don't give an excuse for not being fruitful because somebody else is not making you fruitful he said you must multiply don't no excuse for not multiplication you have, you have no excuse not to be fruitful you have no excuse not to be not to multiply he said you shall replenish no excuse not to replenish your bands when they are about to be empty to restock your food in the house, to restock your electricity bill, to restock your vehicle, to no excuse not to restock, replenish. Then he said further, he said, you must subdue. Did you hear that? So what excuse do you have for a witch to subdue you? Or a wizard, or a devil, or demon, or your government in your country to subdue you? They don't have that power. No government in the world has any power to subdue any individual. They can do some policies that might be not be palatable to your interests somewhere, but somewhere along the line, when you kill with God, God will help, help you nav navigate through those obnoxious policies so you can subdue. Are you listening to me? Very good. Now, he now said the last one, which is also very, very important. He said you must exercise your dominion hallelujah over your life over your jurisdiction 
over your environment, over your business, over your job, over your family, over your all activities that you must exercise. You must take the what does dominion mean? Be in charge, be in control. Don't give your responsibilities to some extraneous spirits or to some other entity around you and give excuse that, hey, he's the one that is not making me to move forward. He's the one. No, 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 no. Life is not like that. But if somebody said, and I love this quote of that individual, he said, every excuse that you give not to move forward, not to excel, not to do what you need to do, he said, is of the devil. And I agree with him. The devil tell people lies. Ah, you can't do it. You can't do that. You can't do it now. And they keep procrastinating. What they are supposed to do immediately, they leave it till another three hours after, which might have been too late. They leave it till the second day or the third day would have been too late. When it is exigent in your life to do it now, do not fail to do it. If it's something you have to do tomorrow, leave it till tomorrow. If it's something you have to do next week, leave it till next week. But whatever it is you are supposed to do now, which is one the part of the topic I've just told you, repentance, don't repent, don't postpone your repentance till tomorrow. Tomorrow might be too late. Every day is a ticket and a second chance for every human being on earth. Every day is a ticket, is a second chance. Nothing guarantees you tomorrow. I'm not guaranteed tomorrow. My tom you know, ne tomorrow never comes. I'm sure you know that. Because every tomorrow is always today. Three weeks from now, four months from now, five months from now, we soon sooner than later become today. So whatever you are to do today, don't leave it to tomorrow. Tomorrow means indefinite, infinity. That's the meaning of tomorrow. But today means now. Hallelujah. The Bible says when you hear his word, do not harden your heart. Surrender unto him now. In the book of Romans, let me quickly open it for you. Romans, do not harden your heart when you hear his word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't harden your heart. Hmm. Look at what he said. He said, but what said it? The word is the word is near thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. This is the word of faith which we speak. Today, if thou shalt confess with the, the, the with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thy heart, and that God had raised him up from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Hallelujah. I'll go back to that scripture later. So, today, if you have to repent, repent. <laughs> there was a guy I was talking to concerning his relationship with his blood brother. Oh, he hated his blood brother so much. I said, look, you can't do that. You can't do that. And this guy has been on the sick bed for years. Love your brother because your brother loves you. Love him. He said, no, I can't. He offended me. He did this for me. He did that for me. He did that for me. In the process, he died. He never repented. He never forgave his brother. The opportunity he had to forgive his brother, he lost it. So, when the Bible says repent in order for you to move forward, eh, don't worry. Okay, I'm, I'm still doing some things now. If I repent now, I won't be able to do those things again. So let me wait until after I finish those things, then I will now repent, then I will now move forward. It's not possible. The one that is telling you to repent might never give you the second chance. Remember the case of the rich man 
that said he had, ah, his bones were full of food. He's, he had plenty of food to eat for the rest of his life. So what does he need to do now? Let me stretch out my legs and, and, and enjoy, pack all the food together that will last me for the rest of my life. And I begin to enjoy myself. <laughs> what did God say to him? He said, you are a fool. That was what God told him. He said, you fool. Tonight, you are going to leave everything behind. You are coming. You are leaving this earth space. You are dying tonight. And he died. That very day. He didn't see the second day. He never got a second chance. And as I've said it before, I said it earlier, every day we get, we get opportunity to be woken up is a second chance. Tomorrow, which I said does not really exist, because to, that, to, look at, look at, okay, give you an example. Last year we started January 1st, right? It ended about just about 48 hours ago. 2023, January 1st, 2023, it ended 31st December, less than 48 hours ago, my own time. The whole thing is gone. The whole 365 years, gone. Now we have started 2024. We are already 2nd of January again. Before you know it, it will be the 31st of December again, and every other day becomes today. I spoke, I've lectured on that today before. Today is always your day, not tomorrow. And I'll see you tomorrow. Who says? And I'll give you tomorrow. Who says? Oh, Lord, my God. Hallelujah. I pray that God will give you understanding. So that sinful life you are living, I, oh, I just want to enjoy myself just a little bit more. Then I, when I gave my life to Christ, somebody said, why are you giving your life so, so, so early to Christ? I was 38 years then. He said, hey, let's keep enjoying ourselves now. When you are 70, 75, and hey, you can now give your life to Christ. I said, what if I don't live to 70, 75? That would have been too late. What if, and apart from that, apart from living to 70, assuming I even live to 70, 75, I told him, I said, God does not eat leftover food. God only eats fresh food. I'm not talking of physical human food. He wants you to serve him from your youthful age. He wants to use your strength. He wants to use all the ability he has depend, de deposited inside of you in the year 2024 and beyond. Hallelujah. He wants to use it. In the book of Isaiah, God asked uh, the people there, he said, who shall I send? Isaiah opened his mouth and said, here I am, oh God, send me. Hallelujah. That should be your response. When God calls you and says, who should I send? You are going to answer. Here I am, oh God. Send me. Hallelujah. God is always looking for people to send. Because he said the harvest is plenty. But the laborers are few. Who should I send? Who is available for me to use? Are you available? That's the essence of the topic we are talking about now. Repent for you to move forward. Hallelujah. God has been calling you, come, come, I want to use you, I want to use you. He said, no, 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 no. I don't want to, I don't want to work for you. I'm okay as I am. Can anybody run from God? Where do you want to run to? Even if you leave this earth space, you say you want to run to Mercury or Venus or the moon or even the sun, that God will not get you there. He will get you there. There's a local language in my place here that says a thousand Samuel cannot really run away from God. A thousand of Samuel cannot run away from God. 
it was Samuel's mother that took him to the priesthood house and said, I donate this boy to God. Let him continue in his service for the rest of his life, his life in God's vineyard. I spoke about Samuel yesterday. And that was where he started his life. And that was where he ended it. Samuel could not run away from God. You cannot run away from God. Once he has made up his mind to use you, just quickly surrender and say, here I am, oh God, send me. This time last year, I was in ministry on live show. I had been getting the nudge. Hey, go on live, go on live. I'm beginning to preach my word. I, I, so I just sidetracked and sidetracked it. Until the, first of, on the, until the first week of May last year. He said, now, start my work. And he spoke to somebody. I wanted to start giving excuses. Uh, this, for this reason, I might not be able to start now. For, he said, start immediately now. He said, yes, sir. That was on Friday. I said, Lord, three days from now, I'm going to start. I'm going to start on Monday. And true to the, to the word, 5th of September, May last year or thereabout, I started. Ministry live show. It wasn't in my calculation. I was just okay, just content with posting my TikTok and all that. He said, go on live. And I've been on live since. And he has moved me from level to level. Hallelujah. It was not in my calculation this time last year. But I repented. I said, Lord, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm going to start on Monday. And, and I, gave him an, I, I gave him a covenant that Monday to Friday, I will always be live. Between that September, May, first week in May last year, and today, the 2nd of January 2024, I've not missed one day. And God is asking you also this afternoon, who shall I send? Will you surrender yourself for him to, to use you? Will you repent of your recalcitrant thoughts and ways and say, oh God, I surrender. Here I am, send me. God is looking for people he's going to use in different parts of the world different parts of the world. May God use you. May God use you. The reason why I'm praying that for you is this. He said he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. He will reward you. Don't run away from him. Jeremiah chapter 4, verse 1 to 4. Look at this. There's punishment when people refuse to surrender to God. There's punishment that comes for it. There's punishment when people also backslide, turn back away from God. And there's punishment when people also disobey God. So no human being will technically get away from God on the planet Earth. From across the globe, whether in rich nations or poor nations, Populated nation, non-populated nation, no human being will get away from God's either reward or punishment. None, depending on which side of the divine you are. Look at, let me read this scripture for you. If thou will return, O Israel, said the Lord, return unto me, and if thou will put away thy abominations, listen to it, thy abominations, out of thy sight, then shall thou not remove if you remove all those abominations out of thy sight, then where I have placed you, nothing can remove you there. Addendum kindly press the middle nothing. paragraph twice. It will stop for you to read after Someone reading press. Once it will continue to the next page this. and repeat saying till you finish reading thanks. Somebody was threatening me. They have threatened me severally. Severally. On this platform, on other platforms, on everything. But God has been with me. He has sustained me because I don't...